Now, exercise 11.1 number four seems to be, at first sight, seems to be the same, much the same thing again. And actually it is, at least it is really the same, exactly the same differential equation that we've just solved completely. But this time it's not the homogeneous, but it's instead it is the inhomogeneous case where I decide to introduce some, let's say, arbitrary so-called inhomogeneity. We've seen this before. We've called it B of X, uh, the regular symbol for, uh, for terms of X on the right-hand side. And it's also uh, mainly in the, in, in the technical domain, it's often called, uh, which is an interesting uh, wording, it's called a disorder function because it, you could say it, it puts some disorder into the system which usually reacts to, to nothing. You could say it fulfills a zero. This could, this could be called its natural behavior. And sin, uh, as soon as you introduce this, let's say disturbance, uh, this system will uh, react differently. So the solutions for Y will be um, modified. And now what do we have to do? One important aspect is, which I uh, honestly speaking forgot at first, and then I got totally complicated, and also, sadly, false results. And then I remembered, oh, I must necessarily normalize this equation in order to use the, the Vronsky method of solving it. Yeah, that's, that, that's a fact. You just believe me. And so what we have to do is we must um, divide the whole equation um, by this leading coefficient term. So it must be normalized for using the, this uh, so-called um, yeah, SLE scheme. Um, which uses a certain system of linear equations um, in order to find uh, a special solution to this inhomogeneous equation. So let's do so. Let's normalize it by dividing for, um, well, there are two uh, terms to be divided, uh, this factor of x, of course, and this factor of 1 plus x in parentheses. Let's do this step by step, well, or also at once. So we get our y prime, y double prime, not isolated, but we get it normalized just with a factor of one. Then secondly, minus, well, let's just take this over, this polynomial over x times one plus x, just put it there. You, just, you don't need to, to simplify it, even if you could, uh, times y prime minus the next one over x times one plus x times y, and then, now, what we get here is our normalized inhomogeneity. That's important for our solution. And this will be one plus X in parentheses squared. This is just given, okay? And then divided by X and divided by one plus X. Now, by chance, we have a squared sign here and here, this is the same factor. Uh, so we can, uh, and we should simplify this to be just one plus X over X. So that's a nice and rather simple uh, new, um, well, disorder function, which I call B tilde of X just for renaming it, okay? So now the Vronsky theorem, which I give you shortly in, uh, in, in the matrix vector notation, it's very interesting. It has to be derived and then proven, okay, of course, by der derivation, which we do not do uh, at the moment, which, which we just assume um, to have occurred. Um, before. So I know you didn't have a, um, a proper lecture about this topic, but a lecture, I mean, but um, well, you can just look it up. And this theorem states that this much the same matrix as we just used it to, to check for linear independence of solutions to the homogeneous differential equation, this Vronsky matrix multiplied with a vector of the primed varied constants. Please follow me. This is a vector, you could say artificially uh, constructed by using all the um, k values, which are, uh, which are due to variation of constants, but they're first primes, okay? And this is shown to be equal to a certain vector of p. This is a vector, uh, a vector of terms of x. And this, also this is uh, defined in quite a special way. It's defined in a way so that almost all components are zero, except for the last one. And for the last one, you take the normalized disorder function. That's just what you do. So it, it's again a case of, if you don't understand it, shut up and calculate. And if you want to understand it, take your time. <laughs> it's better to understand it quite, quite surely. 
but you can sometimes you can just learn to, how to do it and then understand it deeply afterwards. Don't don't worry about this. So uh, what do we have? Remember, this was the Vronsky matrix, and we have to multiply it with this K1 prime, K2 prime. So now I think it's better to understand what I'm doing. And equal to a vector of, let's say, uh, disorder terms where all of them are zero, uh, but the last one is the true disorder term. That's, that's what you do. In case of third order, you would do much the same with a three times three matrix, of course. Then you would have three uh, um, entries of this sort, K1 prime, K2 prime, K3 prime. And here you would have zero, zero, and then the term. <laughs> so that's really easy by concept. Now, variation of constants has been used. This is why I just put it down here again. So this is also using variation of constants, but this time for both, yeah, you see, for both solution parameters of the homogeneous equation. Look here again, these, these ones, this one and this one, both are uh, modified to be um, uh, no constants anymore. So that's the trick behind. And this trick helps us to find a solution, which is a little bit of work, um, well, I'm sorry, I'm jumping up and down, <laughs> uh, not, not knowing where to go. Here, here I am, okay? So the first equation will be, look here, uh, row times column, right? So this is e power x times k1 prime, this one, plus, well, uh, one over x times k2 prime, I just draw my, my unknowns uh, to the left, okay? And this should be equal to zero, the first entry. But in the second row, and this is in this case, it's also the last row, of course, uh, we get this row times the column e power x times k1 prime, my, this time minus one over x squared times k2 prime. Now it's not about understanding, it's about um, uh, getting it done and seeing step by step what I'm doing and saying, okay, I, I can follow you. Um, now, and this is, to be equal to the normalized um, inhomogeneity, which is one plus x over x. Now let's see how to solve this. And actually it is a, a system of linear equations, but the linearity refers to these unknowns. Please note, um, of course, this is not a linear term here at all, or neither is this one and not even this, but these are terms of x. They are um, regarded to be coefficients in this system of equations, right? So it means that the structure of the equation system is linear because the unknowns appear in first um, uh, power only. That's, that's, that's important. These, these are linear combinations of our unknowns. So we may use the methods, the, um, the usual methods for solving um, systems of linear equations. What do I do? Well, I would say, let's take first uh, equation minus the second one. The effect will be that this term disappears, it vanishes, this minus this. So what I get is K2 prime times one over X, but also minus negative the same times one over X squared. So I can again put this to the left and then I have one over X plus one over X squared in parentheses again. You, you, you remember this, this has appeared, uh, well, I think this is the third time now that this combination appears. And then that this, you see, I take the first minus the second equation. So this is on the right-hand side to be zero minus this fraction. And, and that is minus one plus X over X. So how to solve this for a, Q, uh, sorry, for a K2 prime? Well, quite easily, I can put this into a simple fractional form, just, Oh, well, expanding this uh, fraction to be x over x squared, you see, multiplying with x, numerator and denominator. So I get x over x squared plus one over x squared, which is x plus one over x squared. And now I see that I can cross out this x plus one against one plus x here, or just divide the whole equation by this term. Again, x should not be negative one. I know, I, I just ignore this. Um, and then what remains is after taking the whole equation times x squared, we get it fraction free and we isolate k2 prime uh, to be, look here, negative x squared over x. And then this can be shortened to be negative x, just simply negative x. And this can be inserted into, I would say into the first equation. You could also use the second equation, but this is more complicated. So please don't, don't make things more complicated than necessary and decide to insert into the first equation. So what do we get? Well, K1 prime, before solving this to the end, K1 prime times e power x plus this negative x inserted for K2 prime 
times one over X here. Canceling out, it remains just to be negative one. And this can be easily put to the other side with plus one. So what I get is K1 prime times E power X equals one simply. And then isolating K1 prime to just take E power negative X, that's easy. You get K1 prime equals E power negative X. And now going back here, this still has to be integrated once to find K2 without prime, right? So the, the, the sorry, the, the primitive function of K2 prime is needed, which is K2. And this will be, of course, um, the primitive of negative X, which is negative integral X to X, just negative X squared half. And for this one, uh, yeah, we get the primitive function of E power negative X, which is well known to be negative e power of negative x, right? By the chain rule, just taking this integral. So that's it. And don't forget, um, we still have to, well, to, to bring the catalyst uh, procedure to an end, which means we have to go back to our approach, which is not even seen here. I think I put it here in a violet color, is it? Yeah, yeah. Go back to this approach and fill in your k1 and k2. And here you see what you get. It's negative e power negative x for k1 times e power x, this is the catalyst effect, uh, minus from here, where is it? Yeah, minus x squared half times here, the catalyst factor is one over x. So if you understand me properly, uh, my, my talking about catalyst effect is just so that the result will be a, a proper, um, uh, say, disorder response to a polynomial disorder function. Look back here, since the disorder function is a polynomial, why in uh, why in heaven should should the, uh, the disorder response be something very different? It is not. It is also sort of a even a simple polynomial. Then inserted here and combined with these polynomials gets me this polynomial. There's no reason for any exponential to appear. And as you see, the e power x term has just been used as a catalyst uh, in order to find this. And the result, look here, is simple. It is negative. These two cancel out. So it's just negative one in the end. And here it's, even it simplifies a little bit, it's negative x over two, if I, if I shorten it, right? So it's negative one minus x over two, which is a simple linear function of x. And this is exactly the one and only, um, you could say the one and only uh, functional term of x, which is able to fulfill the disorder function in this case. And, but I must admit, we can and we must always allow for the general solution of the homogeneous equation to be included in, in sum. Why is it? It's due to the superposition principle, which states that the general solution of an in, inhomogeneous equation, uh, even if this special uh, disorder response alone fulfills the, the disorder function, it's still allowed to add the total with including two uh, solution parameters, the, the, the general solution of the homogeneous equation. Why is it? Because it does not hurt anyone, right? Because if you fill this in into the equation left-hand side, it will produce a zero on the right-hand side. And in sum, uh, you will still have your uh, disorder function fulfilled by this total result.